very clear. If you read this book, you cannot be deceived by any preacher. Because you will know them. Your eyes will just open. You will know them. Then the Lord led me again to write on Christian giving. The gospel of Jesus has become the gospel of seeds, sowing seeds. The poor cannot have access to this gospel again. <laughs> if you are poor and you are sick, you are, you are doubly cursed. Because this is your sickness. You don't have money to sow seed to God. Who will heal you? Who will heal you? You don't have money to sow seed. And normally you must sow, you must sow much seed to show God how much and how fast He should do it for you. There's somebody told me the various names of the seed. Just like the various names of anointing oil. There is speak up seed. There is what again? You don't know the names? There is what? Breakthrough seed. Breakthrough seed. Answer me now, seed. Seed of faith. Seed of faith. What about seed of tapping? You want you want the preacher to put it to come to you. The seed of tapping anointing. The seed of future blessing. You are still looking for the blessing in the future. to heaven anymore. The Bible says, and the gospel is preached to the poor. Their own gospel is not for the poor. It's to render people twice poor. Because the last money in the hand of the poor, you carry it. My wife was telling me one of these stories of seed faith. Okay, there's another name called Total Spoiling Element. Empty in pocket seat. <laughs> this one, everything that is in your pocket. <laughs> eh? I think the victim of <laughs> Everything that is in your hand, call money. I think that's it for affected somebody so seriously. Everything that is in your hand, call money. If you want God to empty himself for you, empty yourself for God. They have language, they have sweet tongue. Everything that you have in your heart. You say, but what about transport money? Do you know miracle that is waiting for you on the way? You are, we're talking about God, you're talking about transport money. <laughs> so, my wife was telling me, the transport money that was supposed to, she was supposed to, Take a vehicle to his house, to her house, in far distance. Since total offering faith, total seeds, faith her. It was that Sunday, she did it. She dropped it there in the offering bag. And they have promised them all miracles. After service, here is the sun in the sky. Here is the distance to your house. You start moving. <laughs> it's not tricky to your house. You'll be angry with that girl on the way. <laughs> you see, go this way. If this is what God is doing, I'm not interested in you. I'm getting this demonic minister. To corrupt the gospel of Jesus. Hellfire is waiting for them. And that is how you go ahead and be doing this. The rich church tells the smaller churches to pay the tithe of tithe to them. Pay the tithe of tithe to your mentor. So, these smaller churches, they don't have enough money to cater for their needs. They have to again be paying tithes to a church who already has. Why? They are tapping anointing of the church. 
They want the anointing of that man of God. They want the blessing of that man of God. And as they are tapping into, they are sowing seed into their ministry. One tenth of their income. Where do you find that in the scripture? Does the storehouse pay tithes? Will bring ye your tithes into the storehouse. Is there another scriptural command that that storehouse should pay tithes to another storehouse? The church is a storehouse. Where money is to come in for God's work. Where are you commanding that church to pay tithes to another church? Is the church a living person? Ye have, you are cursed with the curse because ye have robbed me. Does a church rob or an individual? Eh? Tithes is on individual, not a church. Not an organization. It is individual that the Lord was talking to to pay tithes. Not a ministry. Not a church. But the church, the ministry, receives the tithe to do the work of God. If another church needs help and they are able to assist, they can assist, but not under the compulsion of God's word to pay tithes to that church. It's not, it's not in scripture. I am suffering these small churches. Suffering them. They are all bringing their money to you. You are mass, much wealth. Gospel of prosperity. Looking for every scripture to use. They are still coming up tomorrow. They are still looking for scriptures. Tomorrow to discover another scripture to use. Corrupting people. Making people reckless. Clearing their money off them. This book. Truth. Holiness. And rewards in Christian giving. Tells you. Biblical injunctions of Christian giving. There's this one they call first fruits. First fruits says, or the principle of first fruits says, in the month of January, or rather at the beginning of the year, everything that you have, all your salary for that year. Bring it unto the Lord, a cursed doctrine that causes these people to do evil. Who will supply them? The Lord will supply your needs. Is the is the Lord was the Lord the one who commanded that? Was the Lord the one who commanded that? That the Lord will supply your need. Listen, first fruits came up at the low and terminated at the low. Tithes did not come up during the low. It lived before the low. That is why it transcends the low. Is that okay? Yes, Payment of tithes was observed by Abraham, by Jacob, far before the low. As a human, as divine obligation upon man on earth. First fruit came up in, in the land of Canaan. Came up as a commandment of Israel. One of the ceremonial commandments. For them to observe in the land of Palestine. After that, it ceases. What continues now is tithes. Why? The Bible says, Abraham, a Levi, paid tithes in Abraham to Melchizedek. The children of Abraham paid tithes in him to Melchizedek. And Jesus is a type of Melchizedek that liveth forever. And therefore, all children of Abraham, as we are by faith, pay tithes to Jesus. And he's alive forever. Amen. And that is why tithes is a present obligation to be observed. Those who say, don't pay tithes, don't pay tithes, curse the preachers. If they don't, they have denied God his right over them. And he that does so is under his divine judgment. Because tithe is a present thing. Melchizedek ever lived in Christ, in the person of Christ. 
The Melchizedek was meant in the Old Testament. They said he ever lived. Why? Because we didn't know when he died. We didn't know about his beginning. We didn't know about how he ended. It is like a man that ever lived. So Jesus has no beginning and has no end. And as tithe was paid by Father Abraham to Melchizedek, we children of Abraham, we pay tithe to our Melchizedek. Who is he? Jesus. Is he alive today? Yes. We pay tithe to him. Amen. You want to pay tithe. So, this book gives you clearly the doctrine of Christian giving. How you will give in holiness without inducement. The book talks about pledges. Although they are not worshiping God in the beautiful holiness, that's much you're giving to. All this telling people, yes, give. Now, how much we are going to do this building? How much will you give? Yes, how much? I'm going to give 2,000 euros. Yes, what about you there? Uh -huh. How much? The people are pledging what they will not give. They don't know eternal life has gone. To make a pledge that you do not fulfill, forget heaven. Because the Lord says that beside them when you come into the house of God, in your mouth and make sacrifice of fools. For they don't know that they're doing, they are doing evil. Yes, they don't know. Vow not at all. No. If you say, vow and pay thy vow. When you have made a promise in your mouth, defile not. Neither say in the ears of God it was a mistake. No. You induce members of the church to be making covenant. Promises. Promises. One is not solved. You brought another one. The other one is not solved. You brought another one. The other one is not solved. You have cancelled their names from the book of life. Because you have made them a bunch of unfaithful people before God. They are fools that are pledging because they don't know that they are doing evil. Some of them think they are wise. They are doing it in shame, but for their damnation. You play with God. You play with man you think is with God too. And you, why are you so full of programs? So full of projects? Is that not the love of the world? Is that not the flesh? Gratification of the flesh? Is that not because you want to make yourself great? At the expense of human souls. Just committing these people. Anyhow. Get them committed. Until the brethren cried out to Nehemiah. Our brethren have made us slaves. They have made our children slaves. Our land have been all given unto them. We are just as bombing in our land. Ha! Because of promises. You, they're telling you, they are hey, we want to do this. You're just learning to please your pastor. Please God instead. If you know you will not be able to stand there, don't make a promise you cannot fulfill. Say what I say. Say it over there. God is not playing with you. That promise is not made to man but to God. You have all, I have altered my tongue. If there is anything a man would have not fulfilled, Jephthah would have not fulfilled his own. Because he had to do with his only son, only daughter. But he said, I have altered it from my mouth. I cannot withdraw. And it involves you. And you altered with your mouth and you think it's nothing. You think it is nothing. Go and trace your way and clean up yourself. Go and make restitutions. Go back to those people where you're not, since you're not able to pay. I'm plead, I'm not able to pay. Confess it before God. It's a sin. Pledging and not fulfilling what you've pledged. You didn't even talk to Christianity. That's why you can easily take that type of action. I never bother. You never understood Christianity. You never understood the perfection God demands of you. I dwell among my people of unclean lips. So I become a man of unclean lips. Please with God to pass you. You don't tell lies. Don't promise God a lie. If you see that that church is not doing what is killing you, leave that place. God didn't send you to a man. 
He didn't send you to any denomination. Leave the place. Why must you remain in darkness? Why must you perish? And you, minister, go and declare those people forgiven. You yoke to them, go and lose them. Before God, all those pledges they have made over the years, that is upon them, written in the register of heaven, go and cancel it. Go, whosoever sins here in me shall be remitted. Go and cancel it. And set those people free. And control yourself in projects, in programs, in deeds. Control yourself. Growth is by God. Your food, the Lord who feeds the birds of the air, will He not feed you? Feed you? Don't. Why must you eat at the expense of somebody's soul? Why? Wow. The last book, so I quote it last because of what is here, but many other books, especially those other uh, similar ones there. The one here is re delightful revelation of heaven and how to get there. How many of you have read this book? You're just laughing. If you wish to go to heaven tomorrow, read this book. <laughs> when you read this book, you will just be singing with, uh, is it, uh, is it James Reeves or John? This world is not my home. Eh? Okay, James Reeves, okay. You will be singing with him. Your, your heart will be in heaven. You'll be just waiting one glorious morning. I shall see my love. This book is the best revelation of heaven known in the world by me today. It is special. It is delightful. It is joy. Somebody who is reading the book said, I don't want to finish it. <laughs> I don't want to finish it. I just want to read some more. I keep it. <laughs> because it gives great joy. All this guilt that is troubling you, hey, will I make heaven? This doubt, read this book, you will die. You will just know that you are going there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The mercy of you will just know. And that faith will overcome all those things. Your life will be pure. Amen. So, this is what the Lord is doing. And many other books. What about the messages? Tapes. We have hundreds of them. And each message is an entity. You will not say you have had it before. That's how God has been doing it. Each message is unique. The messages I am preaching here have not been preached anywhere. Are you getting what I'm saying? They have not been preached anywhere. They are new. The ones I will preach tomorrow, the ones I'm going to preach next year, the way God is doing the thing, I'm surprised myself. The message will just come. I was praying, God, I've come to this place. What message do I preach? That was yesterday's message. I said, what message do I preach to these people? The Lord just dropped it in me. You have been remembered. Amen. God has remembered you. See, yes. This is what was it wonderful yesterday? Yes. You were happy? Yes. It's God that is giving the messages. Today, what is it? Go and tell the story of holiness movement. The history of holiness revival movement worldwide. Hmm. Do I finish this history without talking about our movement in the day? Bring people spread it until it happened with uh, the Lord Sister Mohavina from Sierra Leone. How many of you have listened to Sister Linda? Uh -uh. <laughs> it her own came in a different way. Right in heaven, the Lord told her, I am sending you to a movement. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. 
That is the ministry I, the Lord, have established upon the earth. And I've put my sermon there, my song, I've put him there. If you will join that movement and listen to his word and obey it, you're just waiting for me for heaven. You're just waiting for me for the rapture. The Lord spoke about it over there. The Lord has been speaking about holiness movement prophetically in diverse ways with too many people. Are you here? The Lord told you a little about holiness movement. Can I say, Johanna, by revelation, by vision, you will receive the message. Yes. It's like that. It's like it's unique. It's different. It's different. And it's going to all the world to capture the world. Is getting people converted. So, because of this, the persecutions are great. The devil has raised up and is raising up and will raise up persecutors. In the persecution is in various ways. Challenges, accusations, condemnations, I love somebody else was uh, telling someone that you people are deceived by Pastor Rica. You are waiting for when go home before you know that it's a demon. <laughs> We're hearing all those things, but we kept quiet. Is that clear? Because Jesus has had them. They say he has a demon. Because he was healing people. No, he has a demon. But somebody had him and said, nobody who has a devil speaks like this man. <laughs> Some will tell you, maybe I don't know what you have even had now. They have sent it everywhere. It's part of it. Blessed are ye. When men shall revile you and speak in all manner of evil falsely against you for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad. For so persecuted they the prophets that have been before you. Great is your reward in heaven. So don't listen to anything that wants to remove you from the faith. This work shall continue. Meaning don't away from Jesus. Jesus didn't bother. Because all my father has given me shall come to me. given to me, shall come to me. So he didn't bother. And to, in the world, and today the world is filled with Jesus. With message of Jesus. I am one of them. I have believed in Jesus. I am serving Jesus. I am following Jesus. And I shall see Jesus. I will dwell with Jesus forever and ever. Don't allow anybody to remove you from this movement. God called to hear by mercy. See what he has started to do in your life already. Please, hold to it. Now, why do I have to give this testimony? Maybe one of the reasons is, wherever I go, they announce everywhere, don't listen to him. He was rejected by his church. Don't listen to him. He was put away. He was disciplined by his uh, by, by, by a deeper life. What reason was it? That I committed immorality? That I I I, I embezzled money? What asked them? But that I wrote a book that saves the world. Why did you write that book? I said God told me to do it. No. Get out. Didn't they do so to the blind man? That Jesus opened his eyes. Did they not cast him away from the temple? So that man is no more worthy to leave. But Jesus met him there and reaffirmed him and strengthened him. Peter was in prison under chains. Why? Because he preached Jesus. The angel went to the prison and loosed his chain. What did the angel say? Move, rise up, be gone. Jeremy, Jeremy, Peter and John, move, go to the temple. Preach this gospel. Will this no go and tell 
they mean? Let them come and pronounce that we are free. Whose authority is higher? Jesus. Whose authority is higher? Jesus. If you will submit your mouth yourself to human authority, Jesus will walk in you. Human authority, is it a matter of shame or administration? No, it is my own principle. That's your principle. Is that Bible principle? Do we not come and be following your principle? Now, the door has been shot to many deeper life against this precious work that Jesus is doing in our present world. Blindness in part has fallen upon Israel. Exactly. Wow! Some flimsy things have come among them. So that, for, as we move from nation to nation, nation to nation, there is obstacle, there is challenge. Don't talk, no, he has come here again. How long will you do that? Are you having your senses? Do you have understanding? Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus is greater than man? Have you found out his mind? Was not Jesus also put on discipline by the Pharisees? Didn't they say, if any man believed on him, we will cast him out of the synagogue? Did they not say so? They won't believe in Jesus again because the, the religious authority of those that condemned him? Why are you thinking like that man? That you are, you are, now, what about the backsliders that have been prevented from hearing these messages? The sinners that have, they have used denominational authority to seal them up. What would they say to God for that? See, this is a provision God has made for their salvation. The blockage. That's why denomination is a problem. He has become an enemy of God. Because human politics, human powers are not the one ruling. Human mind is not prevailing. The world of truth is laid aside for the will of man. Do yours with a difference. Fear God. Resolve God above man. We, the people, don't fall. Don't go to Jerusalem. Don't go to Jerusalem. He said, Where are you weeping to break my heart? I am persuaded in me. I will go to Jerusalem. What did they say? The will of the Lord be done. You are, you are a man. Do you know what God is, what God's plans are? You have tried, 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 but the thing is beyond your power. Surrender it to God. Is it a sin? Is it a sin for Paul to go to Jerusalem? Or would you rather say, no, I, you know, I, I want to protect something. Protect what? The man is persuaded from heaven. Why don't you respect that persuasion above human opinion? Why doesn't man surrender to God's mind? It's still the devil's work. So, I have to say this because this world work is going worldwide. To use whomever he wants to use. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord be with you. Amen. There can be crisis, but they will not overcome the plan of God. Anybody can be murmuring anywhere, can be saying things anywhere out of his selfish ambition. Don't pay attention to those things. For we are sincerely doing this work with a pure conscience, with a pure heart and holy life. Jesus told the Jews that was constantly at Jesus. He said, which one of you will convince me of sin? You are talking, hey, hey, but what sin have you had that I committed? I mean, let's go have a moral sin now. Not sin against it, not disobeying a man or a, 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 a human authority. I mean, a sin against God in the scripture. Which one have, can you mention? Why are you so slow of understanding? Do you know that you will separate on earth and each one shall stand before God for judgment? What will you tell the Lord when you stand before Him? What are you going to say? So we bless the Lord. Thank God for this wonderful privilege. May the Lord set you free. Amen. 
They did not meet you a member of holiness movement. Yeah. I'm talking about someone who is born again already. Because a member of holiness movement does not take to heaven. It is faith in Christ. Righteousness and holiness that takes to heaven. But then, being here, we're teaching you the word of Christ. And we're also making use of you because we're working as a team from all denominations we gather to work as a team to conquer the world for Jesus. We're also protecting one another from backsliding, from corruption. As we are together as a family, we're watching your life, you're watching our life, we're checking on yourself, you're checking on us to ensure we keep ourselves holy and continue until we enter heaven. You're welcome to Holiness Survival Movement. We invite you to it. Enroll and be a member and be a preacher in it and preach the right doctrine. Preach the right gospel that will serve the souls of men. Let's rise up upon our feet and worship the Lord with thanksgiving. Thank you, Baba. Worship you, Baba. We praise you, Lord God of your mercy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The movement is moving, it will conquer the world. It's going to rescue my soul for Jesus. <laughs> it's going to prepare the souls of men for it. Commit yourself to God and say, Thank you, Lord. I have heard. Now I've understood. I'm set free. My minds and the things are clouded, my minds have been cleared. What clouded my mind has been cleared? us. The disciples asked, should we obey God or obey man? Judging yourself. As for us, we cannot but speak what we have heard. We are talking about heaven, the time is short. You are talking about denominational politics, you want to be done? Jesus name Don't allow persecution to affect your Christianity. 
if he can get angry, he don't do wrong with it. Okay. He will he will become tired by and by, and he will continue your life. But if you keep on playing compromise, that job will not finish, and you're not getting the full result. Is that okay? Uh -huh. The third question, don't forget. The, the third uh, question. Uh, it, was, it was if I go to work, like if we have a time to start uh -huh. after. Uh -huh. Do they normally give you the quantity of work to do or the time to stay? The quantity is already recorded with the time. So the time you are taught you are you are to take to do it. Mm -hmm. And the quantity of the work. Yeah. And you find out, you ask out from the superior. What if I'm able to finish this work early and have something to learn? <laughs> But in the, the, the law is, when we finish earlier, we are not allowed to go, go out to be more speedy, still down till. So sometimes I do it, I'm close earlier because maybe I want to come to fellowship. Because in time of fellowship, it doesn't do much Um Number one, I will wish you find how to let the people know that I finished my work and I am going to finish. Number two, when you finish your work and you are going to fellowship, you should take that very seriously because it's above the law of government. It's the law of God, not forsaking the assemblies of yourself together. Is that okay? That you need to go to church. You have finished the work at that time, and it is God now you are going for, not any other kind of thing. It's God now. I wouldn't want you to forsake that by government rule. But then, this is a way to see if you can let them understand this. Okay, sir. Thank you. All right. Uh, do I give chance to one more person? Okay, our sister. Uh, uh, light or dark? Uh, light. Okay. Uh, Yeah, Galatians 3 verse 10, that's number one. Then the second one is, um, is it a sin for a woman to rub a powder? Why are you asking that? Yes, sometimes when I have spots in my fingers, you stop when the paper's finished? But you have stopped. Yes, of course. Continue. Continue stopping. That's what I mean. <laughs> because you stop, you didn't notice any people. You saw that it was normal. Those things are just the bondage of beauty. Make your face small, make your face nice after the flesh. But our face is already nice. How many women here are not using powder? Ah. Can you compare faces? Can you compare faces to see which face is mother? No. <laughs> natural. The natural. Uh, those are artificial. I have confidence in you. Is it Galatians chapter 3? 3 base. Yes, Galatians 3 base. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, because the law is saying that they, should, they must circumcise. They must do this. They must do this. Carry out the sacrifice. They must uh, kill the lamb the, the, to sacrifice for sin. Those who are doing this are under the curse, because the law has said, "Cursed is any man that does not do all the law." Don't only do one, do all, and it has always been a difficulty for them to do all. So. Why don't you go for this grace that God has brought to you? Which you just believe in Christ. The spirit of grace will take over. To take over to be helping you in matters of righteousness and perfect your life. So, as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. You know, the Galatian Christians have been affected by some Jewish preachers 
who wanted to tell them that they should both believe in Jesus and practice the law? Paul said no. Remember the law also told them which things to eat, which things not to eat. But the Lord came to say, I have sanctified everything. No food is forbidden anymore, except your stomach doesn't want it. Yes. Although yes. I don't wear it, I hope it's not under the law. Because in the book of the throne, um, yes. this particular uh, verse is not referring to, uh, to, to that particular... Um, Did they write it there? Or you're thinking? It, it's not written here, but it said, as many as they that did not continue in the law. In the law. I mean, you said, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the cost. Yes. So it is written, cost is everyone that's that continue not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Yes. So which law is he talking about here? It's the ceremonial law that talks about things to observe, things uh, that as they got the moral, things of moral. Love your neighbor as yourself. Is that what in the Old Testament? Yes. yes. Has it gone now? No. Is it still effective? Yes. That's the same thing also with mortal dressing because of promiscuity and immorality. It's all right, thank you very much. I'm able to become a European today because my brother was telling me that uh, I should be strict to time. I should swallow. I said, yes, tell me because I'm from Africa. <laughs> but I will have met it by the grace of God. Is that so? It's one minute after two, and I think it's uh, quite okay. And, and I'm grateful. God bless everybody. Bless you. Bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we bless you, Lord, King of the Lord, Lord, will be life. That we will live it, Lord, henceforth, till the end of time. That at the end of the name we pray. Amen.
I'm glad that I'm a part of the family of God. Are you glad tonight that you are part of the family? So much he has done for us. And tonight we want to give our brothers and sisters opportunity to share the love of God. Because that will encourage each other that they have thrown them. So we call now on our brother, Pastor Kennedy, to come forward and to share his testimony with us tonight. Brother Kennedy, Pastor Kennedy. So they shout the way they want to shout. They jump the way they want to jump. Nothing, they don't hide anything. So we should feel free to do because we have liberty in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And before we go into prayer, I need us to sing this song. I need us to just close our eyes, to lift up our hands, and so to pour our heart to God tonight because this meeting is not by any man's making, it's just God. So you are here not by accident, and I'm here not by accident, it's because the Lord wants us to be here to do these things together. Hallelujah. Yeah. Take glory, Father. Take glory, Son. Fall into a dish. 
And I also told the disciples, say, look, you must remove the moat in your eyes first. Before you will see clear to remove another person's soul. So we are going to pray for ourselves first. So that the devil will not have anything to work against us. Why we intercede for others. So we are going to talk to God tonight that He should cleanse us of every contamination. He should cleanse us from every defilement. He should cleanse us from every every pollution in our life, body, soul, and spirit. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and begin to talk to God right now.